the text that serves as the basis for the message this afternoon comes from Luke chapter 22, beginning with the 54th verse. Hear the word of the Lord. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you're talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, when that evening began, none of the disciples had any idea what that night was going to bring. You know, so well, didn't it? The camaraderie that they had with their friends that evening, the warmth of their fellowship, the joy of being with their master, Jesus, and, and hearing him teach. It had all been so wonderful that uh, I think it was one of those moments that they just would want to freeze in time and, and relive forever because they were just so happy. But then suddenly, all of that changed for the disciples. Jesus made a, a statement about one of his disciples betraying him. And that sh- sent a, a shock wave through all the disciples. And the men looked at each other around the table and they wondered who could do such a thing. Oh, there was also an argument, an argument that evening about who was the greatest. Uh, What a shallow moment for them. But as usual, Jesus turned that into a teaching moment. Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Jesus went on to encourage his disciples to do everything upside down from the way the world does it. He said, let the greatest among you become as the youngest. And he said, and the leader as one who serves. For Peter, though, the night got truly serious when Jesus leaned over to him with a a very serious look on his face. And Jesus said this to Peter. He said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter was shocked. He wasn't sure what was more troubling, that Satan was after him or that Jesus was insinuating that Peter himself was going to turn against him that night. Why else would Jesus say, and when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers? Peter wasn't planning to turn in the first place, and so he told Jesus so. He said, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Well, that didn't go so well. Jesus, who knew all things, told him, Peter, will be trained times before the rooster crows. What happened next, we know pretty well, right? The disciples and Jesus went out to the Mount of Olives to pray, but the disciples fell asleep while they were waiting. And then all of a sudden, there were soldiers there. Judas of Iscariot had led those soldiers there, and the chaos that followed was, was brief, but it was pretty intense. You know, a servant of the high priest had his ear cut off, and Jesus shut that down immediately. In fact, he even healed the servant's ear. 
But in the end, it really didn't matter because they arrested Jesus anyway. And they dragged him off to the high priest's house. And Peter, still reeling from what Jesus had said and from all that happened that night, he couldn't help himself. And so what he did was he followed them. He had to see what was going to happen to Jesus that night. And as Peter stood in that courtyard, he, he could see Jesus inside along with the council there. And it didn't sound like things were going very well for that trial for Jesus. In fact, Jesus wasn't even talking. He just stood there, silent. So Peter decided to wait and he moved even closer to the fire just to warm himself a little bit. He wasn't paying attention at all to what was going on around him. He was focused on what was going on inside the high priest's house. And so he didn't notice the servant girl who was sitting next to him and studying his face intently. That is, until she said to him, this man also was with him. And Peter was startled. He turned to her and uh, finally realized for the very first time where he was and, and who was around him. He looked at the crowd gathered there in the courtyard and he knew that this kind of crowd wouldn't be too friendly to somebody like him. He hoped to shut her down by really drawing, and he didn't want to draw any further attention to himself. And so he looked at her and he quietly said, Oh, no, miss, I don't know him. Well, that seemed to satisfy this woman, and so she returned uh, and went on her way. But Peter then concentrated once again on the events that were uh, unfolding inside the high priest's house. Inside, there was more arguing, and raised voices and accusations were being shouted across the room. That pesky servant girl was now gone, but... Now a man took her place, and he too was looking at Peter. And he said to Peter, you also are one of them. Now Peter was a little irritated, and so he needed these people to quit interrupting his concentration. He was trying to concentrate on what was going on in Jesus' trial. And so he turned to the man and he said, man, I am not. The young man walked away, although Peter noticed that he was moving farther in the courtyard and gathered with a group of men over there. Still, Peter's eyes were focused on Jesus and on the proceedings that were going on inside. Time passed. It was now kind of getting close to morning. Peter had lost track of, of all time, and he couldn't tell what was happening inside any longer, but it just didn't seem to be very good. And that's when it happened. That's when it happened. From across the courtyard, a voice rang out, and as soon as Peter heard it, he knew exactly what it was, that they were talking about him. A man was standing there pointing his finger at Peter, saying, I tell you, this guy was with him. I heard him talking earlier, and he's definitely from Galilee. His accent gives him away. All eyes were on Peter. And Peter was terrified. What if they realized that he was really one of Jesus' disciples? Would they arrest him too? Would they take him inside and, and try him also in the high priest's court? He didn't know. But you know what? He didn't want to find out either. And he figured if he would respond very aggressively that maybe they would stop all this talk. So he said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And all of a sudden, the courtyard grew deathly quiet, which allowed Peter to hear something, a rooster crowing. Peter couldn't believe the words that just came out of his mouth. Tears began to fill up in his eyes, and, but not before. He took a glance inside, and he looked at Jesus Peter saw Jesus turn toward him and, and stare directly at him. And that's when Peter remembered Jesus saying, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. We sit here every week 
don't we? We receive God's word and God's sacrament. We've been followers for Jesus for, for some time now. In fact, for some of us, it's been our whole lives. We know what happened with Jesus, right? We know all that he did and suffered for our sins. We even heard him say, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And you know what? We think, yes, of course, Lord, I'll do that. That's what Peter said, right? He said, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. But Peter failed to stand and to bear his cross. He failed to follow his Lord and endure what the Lord endured. And you know what? Very often, so do we. We fail to do the same thing. We fail to acknowledge our faith in public. We are often scared of how people are going to react to that or maybe of what they'll think of us or what they'll say to us if we do. Or maybe bearing the cross just doesn't seem all that appealing to us. We'd rather do things our own way. Often we sinfully desire to follow culture and how it views issues such as morality or ethics or civil discourse or our leisure time. We find ourselves drifting away from God and from God's word instead of drawing closer to him. We hedge on matters of, of raising our family and the faith. We conform to matters of sinful behavior that cause us to blend in with our society instead of standing out in our society. We follow the world's views on matters of marriage and gender and homosexuality and abortion and creation and, and science as they believe the ultimate authority. So often, you know the things that you ought to say and do as a follower of Jesus. You know what's required, and so do I. You can even talk with other people standing at a distance and, and condemning this sinful world. But when someone comes up to you one-on-one -on -one and says, you also are one of them. You're a Christian, aren't you? In that moment, what do you say? At times like this, just like Peter, we can find our guilt to be overwhelming. We may even find it hard to step back into church knowing that God knows what hypocrites we are. It tends to silence our prayers before him. It can slowly um, eat away at our consciences and we wonder like Peter, can a sinful denier of Jesus be forgiven? Well, the answer is plain and simple to that question. The answer is yes. You see, after his resurrection, after Jesus went and destroyed sin and death and the devil on the cross, after he walked out of that tomb alive and victorious, one of the first things that Jesus did was deal with Peter's denial. You'd think that that would be the worst thing that, that Peter could possibly imagine happening. Uh-oh, Jesus is going to uh, deal with my denial of him. But you know what? Jesus knew it was the one thing that Peter needed. And so on a shoreline, one morning, Jesus asked Peter three separate times, Do you love me? And Peter grieved that Jesus had to ask him not once, not just twice, but three times responded by saying, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But Jesus did all that for Peter's sake. Because when Peter denied Jesus, they shared that knowing glance. Well, once again, right now on that shoreline, they were sharing that same glance, except this time it was more than a glance. This time, Jesus was sharing with Peter a vision that he had. See, he was forgiving Peter for his denial. But he was doing even more than that he was also entrusting Peter with his work to do. He was entrusting Peter with Jesus' own work. He said, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, 
build them up. And perhaps Peter remembered at that time, uh, before all of this, before Peter even denied Jesus, Jesus knew this was all going to happen. And Jesus also knew that he would restore Peter and forgive him. And that's why Jesus said, and when you have turned again, in other words, he turned away with his denial, and when you've turned again back toward me, strengthen your brothers. Yes, you see, Jesus knew that he would deal with Peter's denial, calling Peter to return. And Jesus knew that he would deal with our denial too. And he calls us to return, just like he did Peter. Even after times that we fail to live up to our faith. That's why Jesus took our denial to the cross along with all the other sins that we commit each and every day, and along with all the sins of all the people of the world. And he died for them there on that cross. Jesus suffered the punishment that we deserve for our sins as he hung on that cross and died. And by the mercy of God, we don't get which, what we deserve, which is really eternal punishment. But instead, by God's grace, we get what we don't deserve. In other words, we get forgiveness for our sins and eternal life. Like Peter, all who deny Jesus will be restored by him. Jesus will not deny you before the Father because he himself was denied by the Father on the cross in your place. And so today, Jesus asks you, do you love me? Now, if so, you've got work to do too, just like Peter. Share this good news. Tell other people about Jesus and what he's done for them. Don't shy away from claiming your Lord and Savior in public. He's called you to return from your denial because he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abound. Your salvation is done. You are a forgiven child of God. It is finished. Amen.